Hi, and welcome to You Create Art at Home. I'm Bess, and I'm here for you to get your weekly art fix. I want you to connect creatively, have some fun, all from the convenience of your home. So hi kids, I hope you're ready. Today, for Paint and Picnic, we are going to be doing Isla the cow. She's a colorful cow, um, and you may do as many uh, or as whatever colors you want. So obviously I'm gonna be taking you through bit by bit, step by step, like I always do. And I want you to have some creative freedom here. So feel free, change things up. If I'm painting you red and you wanna paint pink, paint pink. If you're um, painting blue and I'm doing green, that's fine. This is all about us having our own choices, yeah? So I want you to have your own choices. As always, I would love for you to drop a message below and let me know where are you watching today? Are you watching from home? Are you in Brisbane? Are you coming from another country? We welcome you all. This is a place where we're all connecting and getting creative together. I know things are changing. Um, certainly lockdowns lifting in Australia a little bit and each country starting to go through that gradual transition. But I'm not leaving you just yet. I'm loving these Saturday nights and I'm loving connecting with you guys. So as long as you want me, then I'm still going to be carrying on with these paint and picnics and sip and paints for the foreseeable future. Uh, who have we got? We have got Leonie. Welcome from Clontarf. Welcome. Um, thanks for hooking in tonight. Um, as always, I really want to encourage you to, to use the materials you've got at home. So You Create Art at Home is about the convenience of your own home using what you have to hand. Sometimes I paint in acrylics, sometimes I use pencils, watercolours, you know I've done been doing classes and classes and classes. I've had it, I think I've done 110 classes and if not a few more now, all for you during lockdown. Who else have we got? We've got Amanda, welcome. First time tuning in from Brisbane. You're very welcome, Amanda. That, like I said, there's over 120... <laughs> 20 classes so you can catch up on those or you can just keep on the journey with us we've got sandy from perth hi sandy how are you you're a little bit behind us in time so we're five o'clock you're three o'clock in the afternoon something like that and if i got that right that's amazing math is not my strong foot uh who else have we got we got trish super excited watching for brisbane yay i'm excited too i've now got a really fancy microphone and my my husband, who is an amazing, I'm not worthy, I2 guru, who has set up two screens so you can see me there and then you can see me here. I don't know. It's all above me, as you can imagine. But I've got this microphone and I'm not allowed to be too loud. How is that ever going to be possible? I do not know. But anyway, I've got to watch the dial and apparently if I'm in the red, you're all going to go, ah! So that'll be quite funny. So I'm sorry if I shout because I just get animated and crazy, as you know. Okay, who have we got? We've got Margaret McIntosh. Well, that sounds like a Scottish name, Margaret. And as you know, this evening at seven o'clock, we're doing a Highland cow. So maybe you can stick around for that too. But welcome, welcome. Who else have we got? We've got Jackie from Hemel Henstead in the UK. Hi, Jackie. Welcome. Um, as you know, I'm a pom. Um, Pom is the Australian name that they give us. Pom de terre, all that shenanigans. But anyway, um, I'm from Cornwall and I've been living in Australia on and off for about ooh, 14 years, no, 13 years, something like that. Um, who else have we got? Oh, Margaret with two Scottish girls, yay! Um, and Amanda says, I plan to give the gorgeous cockatoo a go. Yeah, that was a fun one. Uh, the thing with that one, Amanda, well, you'll hear me during the video, because it's one tone, you just have to trust the process a little bit, okay? I mean, you don't have to do it one tone. If you want to do a multicolored rainbow um, cockatoo, absolutely. But because I just use blues and blacks, you just have to kind of mix it and think, um, you know, think about that tone ratio. But I take you through it step by step. And we had some amazing results on that one. Uh, you're going to do both. Fantastic. Karen Marshall's in. Hi, Karen. <laughs> I was uh, Zooming with Karen last night. She is our local resident Gap 
cookery school and me and my husband had a bit of a date night. Uh, I actually didn't have any kids at home, which was fantastic. Uh, and we cooked a curry with Karen last night and it was great fun and tasted amazing. And we're having seconds, which the best kind of cooking, wouldn't you agree? The best kind of cooking is when you cook once, serve it twice or three times. Hallelujah. And that's one of the reasons why I love Christmas. Leftover city people. Uh, let me just draw your attention to my beautiful earrings. These have been made, I don't know, can you see those? These have been made by my daughter, so they're in FIMO, and it's a little artist palette, oh, they're twisting, a little artist palette with um, paint brushes. So they might flap around, I'm not sure how long, I keep on catching, I'm not sure how long they'll last. So that's it, so what's Karen? Let's just make sure I've got everybody on there so far. If you come in, please give me a hi. Obviously you know this, I love it when you do this to me, I love it when you do this to me. And if you're getting stuck, please say stop. If I bend down like this, it's because I'm looking at all the um, texts as they come in, okay guys? So I wanna make sure that if you're stuck, give me a shout out down below so I can see what you're stuck with. And we will go step by step, slowly, slowly, and I will make sure you get to the end. Bye David, thanks for the setup. Mwah! My gorgeous husband is now going home to sort out the kids. Uh, luckily, just so you didn't think, my, my youngest is uh, 11 and I literally live across the road, so it's all good. Okay, brain fart ha happening, I just need to focus. Um, so what I'm gonna be painting with today is, well, I'm gonna do two things. I've done an awful lot of acrylic painting with you guys, and so I wanted to take the kids, and I know some adults are there, let's just pretend you're big kids for today. I wanted to take you through, um, a mixed media kind of approach. Now, if you haven't got this to hand, don't worry. You use what you've got, remember? Some people just do a pencil sketch and that's fine, okay? The point of this is connecting with me, having a bit of fun, letting your mind go, opening that creative side of your brain. Hello, Mr. Right Brain, where are you? Um, and just having some fun. But I'm gonna do a mixed media. What does mixed media say? It sounds so poncy. Well, it's not really. It's basically using more than one type of material. So I'm going to be using oil pastels and I'm going to be using watercolors, okay? Now, if you've only got watercolors, it's fine. If you've only got colored pencils, it's fine. But essentially, in, in many ways, it's just like cooking, really. As long as you've got a semblance of the ingredients, whether it's exactly the right one, you, well, Actually, that's not true. Cooking is more of a, um, a science. However, I was brought up by a beautiful mum who was very much one dollar for this, one scoop of this, what's in the pantry, ready, steady, cook. And that's kind of how I've been brought up cooking. So my cooking is very, very, very creative. And, um, and to be honest, I'm teaching my kids to cook like that. That way, you don't always have to have everything lined up in little pots. You don't always have to be within the lines. And my art approach is very, very much the same. If you've only got a magazine and you've only got a stick of glue, you can still do this picture. You're just gonna tear it up, find the colors of the magazine, and you're gonna make a collage. The principles are the same, the outcome will be different. Yeah, sure, and that's exactly what we want. We don't want 65,000 pictures all looking the same around the world. We want you to have your arty thing, okay? So, even though I'm gonna be using maybe different materials to you, that's okay, don't stress about it, all right? Like I say, this picture is a bit like if anybody has done the puppy dog that um, I did a few weeks ago, and if you enjoy this one, and I also did an acrylic elephant, which is, I'll show you, I'll show you. See, the exciting thing about this um, microphone is as I walk away, you don't lose my voice. <laughs> Who knew? Okay, so this was the elephant, yeah? And this elephant is similar to what we're doing today. It's all color blocking. So it's blocks of color. So when I do one color, excuse me, I'm gonna cough. <coughs> Sorry, that probably was annoying on the, on the speaker, but I, when you got a cough, you got a cough. Um, yeah, so color blocking is all about creating lumps of color and not blending and merging the colors together, all right? And that's how you get vibrancy and punch. Okay. So, are we ready, people? Yes, yes, yes. Who else have we got? We've got Alison. Hello, so excited. Welcome, welcome. Hopefully, you're all ready. If you've got your paint, if you've got a bit of a snack on the side, a bit of a drink, let's go. All right? Okay.
Now, I normally start off by painting the shape, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. If, especially children, if you're their children and you don't want to start with paint, I understand. It's okay. I'm 48. I've had lots of practice, okay? If you're brave enough, then draw with paint. If you're feeling nervous, use a pencil and a rubber. Neither is it better. No one's any better because they just go straight to paint. I do it because it's just one process less, okay? So don't panic. All right. Now, because I'm going to use watercolors, I'm going to draw with the watercolor. And on this particular painting, it's very bright. So if you go into You Create Art at Home, if you go to my page, the header at the top of the page has got a picture of it, okay? So you can pull it up if you need something for reference. I'm going to use a gray color to paint with today to just to do my line work, all right? Um, you can, let me get rid of that message there. You can use, um, I wouldn't go for a black because black is so hard. It's really, really, you know, it's a really full on. So a pencil's gray. So go with a gray or go with um, a, a dark blue maybe or a purple. And we're going to start to sketch out our cow. All right. Are you ready? Let's go. All right. So here we are. My paper is portrait, which means up and down, not sideways. The painting later is sideways. All right. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a kind of rectangle shape. If I just move my clips up a little bit, right, that's halfway in my paper. And when I do the adult paintings, I say put a dot here, put a dot here, and put a dot at the top, halfway at the top and halfway at the bottom. So if you want to do that now, please do. I've got my clips here today and this is halfway where my easel is. But this will help you navigate. So when I go two centimeters to the left, it just helps you a little bit. If you don't need it, good for you. All right, so we want our cow to be quite large. So if I show you, this is how wide my head's gonna be, all right? That's how wide my head's gonna go. I'm reckoning that's probably about eight centimeters from that side, about eight centimeters from that side, and that probably looks like mm, 15 centimeters, something like that. And what I want to do is I want to draw a kind of rectangle shape. Okay, sorry, the, <laughs> just to share with you, my husband's left the door open and there was just the creepy wind just blew it open then. It was like, Arrgh! and honestly, that just meant, give me a little bit of a spook then. But anyway, it's fine. I am in a church. I have to say my studio is in the basement of a church, so I think I'm okay. All right, so here we go. We're going to go up, across the top, and down. Now you can see from my brush stroke, I've not pressed really, really hard. Why? Well, because we're going to change it and amend it a little bit, okay? But for now, I just want to get that shape in. I'm just wondering whether you, can you tell me, can you see that? I might need to knock off one of these lights. That looks like it's too bright to me. Uh, let's see, can you see that top line there? Oh, you can now. Maybe I didn't press hard enough. So we need the lot. Okay, let me think round. Let me think round this. I'm going to go to a pencil because otherwise you're not going to see my drawing. Let me just get a pencil. How can I be in an art studio where there's no pencil? That doesn't make any sense. All right, I've got a pencil. Listen. We're, we're struggling a little bit with the light in here because uh, above here I've got um, fluorescent tubes and the fluorescent tubes are like, you know, ancient because obviously the, the place is ancient and they kind of flicker. So then I've got my other light set on here to, to, for you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. But I'm just looking and thinking that's a little bit too light. Uh, good morning, Sylvia from Cornwall, from Crowless in Lunchman WI. Welcome, welcome. And we've got um, hi, Pip. Uh, Jackie's saying hi, Pip. Too bright, a little hard to see. Yeah, I get that, Amanda. I'm with you there. So I'm just working that out. I'm just going to turn that one off there. No, I think it's this one here. Let me move, let me bounce that light up there. It's okay. We can work with this. It's all about, you know, figuring it out. Ugh. You need the light, but you don't want it too bright. Is that better? Yes, I think that's better. Give me a thumbs up if you think that's better. I think that looks better. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna come I'm gonna turn it at an angle how's that people so what I think I might need to do is as we get bigger I might pull it back but at least you can now see that can't you yep I reckon you can I'm looking it's too hard to see yeah but I think it's okay now let me know if that's better I think it's better give me a thumbs up thank you <laughs> and this is what the, you know this is the way it is isn't it we're in lockdown I'm using I'm using clip lights from my children's bedroom hello this is what's happening um, so you know we're just we're using what we got <laughs> okay so this is the start of my ha my my head um, okay I'm gonna use go to a pencil and then I want you to do a big circle here a big oval shape okay a big oval shape that's gonna be the muzzle of our cow the muzzle of our a muzzle nose mouth area I think it's called a muzzle awesome Yep, that's looking better. Good. Awesome. Thanks, Amanda. Keep me on track, mind. I need you to keep telling me what to do. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we've got the basis of where our cow is. And in a minute, we're going to shape it a bit more. Let's put the ears in. So the ears are going to go from the side of the head, not the top of the head. And I want you to do a nice big leaf shape, okay? But the top of a cow ear, cow's ear is flatter than the bottom. All right, the top is flatter than the bottom. Okay, I'm going to go over this side. And remember, you know, everybody's cow, just like every person, has its own unique personality. So we don't need to be totally precious about this. We can change it up a little bit. We can sculpt it. They can have their own individual little faces. So don't, if you're there with a couple of friends or if all your family are doing it together and you look at somebody's and go, oh, this is better than mine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Theirs is theirs. Yours is yours. They're equally fabulous. Okay. So I've got my head. I've got my ears. Now we want to put in a couple of horns and these are like a little, um, an upside down letter U. Can you do that kids? I'm sure you can. So an upside down letter U, one there and one there. Super easy so far. Jackie's saying fingers crossed. <laughs> You'll be fine, Jackie. You've got me. You know that. I take I tread carefully with you all. All right, so we've got our two upside down letter U's. Now the next thing I want you to do is put an um an arch or a curve between those letter U's. And that's actually going to be our the top of our head. Okay, because his head isn't flat. We just work with when I, whenever I teach children, we start with shapes that we all understand, a leaf shape or an eye shape, a letter U. If you, if you work in shapes and colors, art is not scary. It really isn't, okay? Then it's about personal choices, isn't it? Just to change things up. All right, let's sculpt the face slightly. Now, a cow's face is not straight. So I want you to make it come out there, which is where the eye socket would be, out and in out and in all right so you're just kind of creating a bit of shape you can see I'm using a sketchy pencil and I've got paint lines there I'm okay with that it doesn't matter we're going to paint over all of it it's fine all right and, and I did say to you mixed media so now I'm using paint pastel and pencil who knew all right so this is all looking good I'm happy with all of that now we really do need to create the shape of this. So I, I lived on a dairy farm, so I know about cows. Okay, we if you look in the center of your cow, I reckon five centimeters. If I just put two marks there, can you see that can you see those two marks? Um hang about here. I'm just looking because it's saying low battery and I don't know why it's saying low battery. I hope this isn't going to go off. It's saying low battery, but I'm all plugged in. So I'm just going to give the end a wiggle to make sure that it really is in. And if it goes off, oh, if it goes off, we'll move to one camera. It's fine. Okay, so let's go here. So this is this is the bit at the top of the nose. And from the top of the nose here, I want to round off. I want to go out down the side to the edge of our oval. 
and the same down this side. Out down to the edge of the oval and then I want you to round it and round it. Okay, we're going to come in and do the mouth and the mouth is a curve here and down there. It's a bit like if you imagine Marilyn Monroe's skirt as it flips up. It's kind of like that. So we're going to go up in one corner and all the way down on that corner because he's sort of doing a boo and that's the kind of shape he's making in his mouth. All right, now we need to put in his bottom jaw. So this is going to be the sort of guideline that we're going to use, but I'm going to come in here, I'm going to come in here, and we're just going to curve it off a bit better. And we're going to put an inside to that mouth. So now you can see that we've got a better shape altogether. I'm just going to get a rubber. If you've got a rubber, great. If you haven't got a rubber, don't worry, because we're going to be painting over the background anyway. But just to help you and avoid the confusion, I'm just going to rub out those two side lines and then you can see the shape of the nose. Everybody okay so far? Keep those comments rolling through so I know that you're all okay. Hopefully you're doing all right. Okay, let's put in the stripe that goes down the nose and we want it to kind of hit where those two guide marks are, just slightly, one centimetre in, centimetre in from there. And they come from the horn, it comes across, and his stripe hits down through the centre of the nose. The same on this side, down through to the centre of the nose. So we're starting to build up our, our cow now. And I would love you children to put whatever eyes you want to put in, okay? Really go for it. You can make your eyes large with lashes, or you can make them serious. You know, give your cow your own expression, all right? I'm going to do quite large eyes, in like that, and then I'm going to do arches inside the eye. So I've done a circle, and I've done an arch inside, and they're my eyeballs, and we'll colour them in and paint them in later. So that's pretty much all of the um, head done, except for the nostrils, and the nostrils are like a slice of lemon in a G and T, half a moon, or a, um, what do you call them? A comma, that sort of shape, okay? Now, we'll paint into them later, but I'm just going to put in my nostril shape. I'm going for the comma shape, but you could do a half moon if you find that easier. Whatever reference that you've got in your mind, just helps you to, um, I'm just looking and that one's not quite in line. So I'm just going to make it go a bit lower. Try and make them symmetrical at least, eh? There. Awesome. So is everybody doing okay? Am I going too fast? Hopefully not. So if you're, if you're drawing this with paint, great. I'm just, I've just moved to the pencil just so that you could see it a bit, a bit, bit darker. All right, let's just put in our body now. So the body, here's the front of his body going down and his back is just going to go off to the side. Front of the body going down and his back is off to the side. And that is our drawing done. So I am now going to start using oil pastels. I want you, if you want whatever paints you're using at home, or if you're using textures, felt tip pens, pencils, absolutely fine. Drop me a message just down below. Let me know what you're using so I can keep in my mind how to explain things. Um, but I'm going to start to block out my colours using some pastels. So I'm starting this right hand side of my cow's face is going to be in warm colours. So I'm using reds and oranges, okay? red and orange and maybe a touch of yellow. Let me just get the yellow out. These are just smiggle ones. These are from my daughter. Let me just get a yellow one. There's the yellow. All right, so I'm going to put some yellow just in by the eye there. And a little bit just on the corner of the nose. So this is your first colour. Okay, this is your first colour. If you're following me, then follow me as the colours that I'm doing, all right? 
Follow me as the colors I'm doing. You're using watercolor, oil, pastel, and acrylics. Brilliant. Acrylic, acrylic, that's fine. Awesome. Thanks, Sandy. Thanks, Trish. Brilliant. Am I going too fast? Are we all at the same place? Hopefully, you're all doing okay. I know it's difficult to do the art and comment, but I need to know what you're doing. <laughs> or I need to make sure that, well, I guess you'll tell me if I'm going too fast, hey? All right. So I'm going to stay. If you remember, if you, if you were here and you did the elephant and you did the puppy, we go color by color. So I'm staying with my yellow people or your lightest tone. If you decided to go green, that's fine. Lightest tone. All right. So I'm going to have a stripe of yellow here. This is the inside of my cow's ear. I'm going to have a patch of yellow here. You might be using paint. It's exactly the same. You might be using pencils. It's exactly the same. Just follow the position of where I put my color. All right. Yellow, 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 yellow. Awesome. Watercolors, oil, pastel, acrylics. Beautiful. Awesome. Everybody's happy with that. All right. And now I'm going to have a big section of yellow here on the back. A big section of yellow here on the back. Hiya, my hubby's just come. I'm just going to talk. This one's saying low battery. And so it's, I think it keeps freezing. Just, it's not freezing? Okay. Well, it's, it's got low battery on the screen. That's what it's saying. Sorry, just having a bit of a technical. Okay, so here's my yellow there. And actually, that is my yellow complete. Bye bye yellow. All right, I'm switching it up to orange now, peeps. Let's get that orange in. Now, like I said, this is gonna be my hot side of the cow's head. So I'm gonna put some orange in. Just round that eyeball. And remember, you're painting in patches. So you don't wanna blend, you want to sit the color next to each other. Sit the colour next to each other, all right? So I'm going over my scribbly line, so that's okay. You can see where that orange is there. I've left some white paper showing, and that's because I'm using pastels and I'm going to paint over the top. If you're using acrylics, then just fill it all in, all right? All right, now I'm going to put a piece of orange under this ear here. And I don't think the shape that you create is really important. It's gonna be all blocky. I'm gonna show you, let me just show you another painting. I showed you the elephant. Here's another painting I've done. I'm just walking the other side of my studio. And you might like to see this. This is a pug cow, a pug cow, <laughs> a pug dog. And you can see it's exactly the same process. So it's just in lines, let me bring that closer. Can you see that? So it's just in lines and shapes and sections. But the key thing is to go color by color. All right, so that was my little pug. All right, so here's my cow. We've done our yellow, I'm on orange. I want quite a bit of orange here, down here. Now I'm gonna paint it, uh, sorry, pastel it quite liberally. So you, liberally, children, means that I'm being quite generous with how much color I'm putting on. And because I've got pastels, it's going to be a little bit more scratchy than if you were using paint, which is fine, by the way. I'd love you to leave me um, just a quick message down below later on or during the day when you're taking a two-minute break and tell me what you think of the sound. Because like I say, I'm wearing my new lapel mic and the brilliant thing about that means when I turn my back, hopefully I still sound great. <laughs> so that's the idea because... Um, Obviously, you know, when I started this before, when we started at COVID, I didn't have any of this kit. Um, and it's coming from China. And uh, we're learning how to use it as we go, me and Hubster, and he's been amazing. And uh, this just really helps, doesn't it? It just helps with the sound. Whereas I could see from some of my earlier videos, when I turned to the, to the easel, obviously the sound's a bit more muffled. All right, I've got, um, hopefully you can see that, I've got a second orange. So let me show you the two oranges. I've got a second tone of orange. If you haven't got a second tone of orange, add a little bit of white or a little bit of yellow and create yourself a second tone, okay? So I wanna add a second tone of orange just here. Do 
just there, just a little patch there. I'm going to add a little bit at the bottom of his lip. And I'm also going to add a bit round the eye, just so I've got that second tone of orange. Now, some people get really stressed out when they can see pencil lines in drawings. I don't. I'm going to be putting a black pastel over this, so I'm all okay with it, all right? Some people really worry that it's not looking lovely. I'm just going to add a little bit more orange just up here around the yellow. And this kind of just helps that whole patch of warm. Maybe a tiny bit in this corner as well. You can see that when I'm using pastels, I'm draw essentially drawing like you would with a pencil. You know, you're, you're laying it on in a sketchy kind of way. But the principle is the same. Oil pastels are essentially paint that's been made into a crayon to use. So the, what, the reason why I like them is that you get a really nice, vibrant and really thick application of colour. Wax crayons don't give the same depth. So if your kids start really liking art, oil pastels are great. They're not messy. You can use them with watercolours and then you get fabulous results um, and there's no real mess with them. All right, so we've done our orange and we've done our um, yellow. Now I'm going to move on to red. So find yourself a red. Here's my red. I'm going to go with the, with the oil pastel again. And the first place I'm going to go is up here. And I'm going to add a bit of red to that orange. And I'm going to make it come back to where the yellow is. So I'm almost like creating, well, that would be like a, a semicircle, I guess, across the bottom. And I'm just going to put a bit of red there as well. It's always good to balance the colours. Just check I've got any comments. Sound is very good. Sound is perfect. It's freezing. Oh, oh! I think it was freezing purely because um, the camera had low battery. It didn't have low battery, can I just say, but there's something going on, so we've just switched the cables. All right, so that should be fine for you now. Okay, the rest of this side, the rest of this side here, I'm going to do in red, people. So the rest of this cow's ear on the right ear, side of the face, sorry, eye, I'm going to be doing in the red. Beautiful. And you can see I have intentionally left some white paper showing. Done the red there. Yep. Now I'm going to create a swoosh of red around the nose, on that corner, corner bit of his nose, round the corner. And then we're going to put that colour in next to the yellow, just like that. I'm going to add a bit of red down here where I have that splodge of orange. And now, so you can see the kind of shape I did on that side, I need to start shaping it here for the legs. And so I'm going to add a piece of red and I'll end up leaving a triangle shape in the middle. How's that looking, all right? That side's going to be blues. Don't need to worry about that just yet. The rest of the ear is going to be pink and purple. So the only other part of my red is inside my mouth. Now, this is also going to have pink. So I want the red to be underneath. So the darkest area where the shadow would be, this is where the red's going to be. And then we'll use pink for the tongue. So just a bit of red. I guess I've done it about a centimeter deep, okay? So not too much. Good job. Oh, I like him. I like him, I like him, I like him. Actually, I shouldn't say him, it's her. I called her Isla. And kids, if you want to personalise Isla, you could put some flowers in her hair later. You could put a hat. You could put some flowers coming out in her mouth and we could do that. In the picture that I found, it had a butterfly. So if you want to put a butterfly on, we could put a butterfly on as well. Good job. All right, that's all the hot colours. So if you're using paint straight up now, wash those brushes through really well. I'm not going to use my watercolours yet. I'm going to lay on the rest of my um, oil pastel in the cool colours, and then I'm going to use the watercolours afterwards. So just like we did with the hot colours, we're going to need uh, the yellow. 
oh no, because we've already done the yellow, sorry. We're going to need green, and you'll need a light green and a dark green. So just like we had with the reds, we need a light green and a dark green, and you'll need a blue. All right. I've got, let me show you my colours. Can you see that? Let me have a look. In, uh, if I hold it in front of the paper, actually, it's better. Let me go closer. I'm trying to let you see. So I've got two greens and two blues there. Can you see that? All right. So let's start off again. We're going to start with the lightest green. And the lightest green is going to go the closest to the eye. And it's a similar process that we did on that side. So I'm just putting a bit of light green around the eyeball. And now I'm going to um, use the same light green underneath the ear here. So my light green is like a limey color, I would say. If your light green isn't bright enough, add some yellow to it and you'll get a brighter color. All right, you'll get a brighter yellow. And then this patch here, all of this is going to be the light green. All of this part here, all the way down the bottom, is going to be my light green. Great big patch right through there. Ears, check. Side of the face, check. Might just make it come down a little bit longer. Okay, now change to your dark green. Dark green next to your light green here. And because I'm using oil pastels, you can see I am doing it very sketchy. Okay, you can see I'm leaving what areas of white and that's okay. If I pull that back, is that better? You can see the whole screen. That's how far I've gone down to the bottom, all right? I came forward so that you could see the lines because the, the light wasn't quite right. But I have gone all the way down to the bottom. Okay, then dark green above the eye and round the face. And so what, right next to, adjacent, next to your light green, add your dark green. And here I've left some white showing. And now I'm going to go to my lightest blue. And the rest, and my lightest blue is kind of an aquary color. If you're painting this, you might have a slightly different tone than this. And that's okay, that's fine. And that bit at the top. So it's not really a baby blue. To get this kind of color blue, it has a tiny bit of um, yellow with it. And that's how you get that kind of greeny color. And I don't, in my pastels, that's the only blue I have other than dark blue. So we'll just go with that. Okay, now I'm going to add some patches of blue down here. This is my lightest blue, the blue-green that I've got. I've got one patch here, one patch here in my V. I'm going to move it back so you can see how far it goes. I know you can't see the top, but then you can see how far this color goes down to there. And where else? Okay, then this blue here, I want to add a bit at the top of his head. So you can, I'm gonna come forward again so you can see that because the light is bouncing a little bit. So I'm going up and down in kind of strokes like this, almost like he's got a little Mohican. Morning, Naomi saying hello from Cornwall. Going to get Artie later, please save the video. You know me, Naomi, of course I'll save the video. Can't wait for you to get Artie with me, my darling. Naomi is one of my bestie boos from Cornwall. Pardon? Someone said, can we slow down a little, please? Of course we can. No problem. I'm conscious of moving it forward and moving it back because the light isn't that great tonight for some reason. Can't quite, quite suss the light out. But all you're missing is a tiny, like, here's my hand. You're missing about a centimetre below. 
But if I lift it up, you can see the colour just goes down to the bottom, all right? The most important is that you get to see the face properly. Okie dokie. So we have got the blue here, the blue here, the blue here, here. And I did a bit of a mohawk. We're going to put some curls on that in a minute. But um, I just did it in stripes like that to start off with. We're doing really well, gang. You're doing brilliantly. For those of you that are ready, we will move on to the dark blue. Leonie, I'm not going to go too fast. Again, it's just patch by patch. So I'm going to add the dark blue now. Be good if you let me know what colour you're on and then I can see how far behind you are or anybody else is so that I can work it out time-wise. So I've added in a big lump of blue there, a bit of blue underneath the chin. I want to add blue in the ear there, that's where the ear kind of folds over. And the same on this side. Here's a true story for you. As you know, I have shared with you, I lived on a farm as a child. Delighted, sounds like heaven, as a teenager. Ooh, it was a ah, ah. As a young kid, amazing. Anyway, we had a cow on our farm called Dairy Maid. And this cow was so tame, like literally, I'm not actually sure. I think, I must ask my dad, but I'm pretty sure the cow stopped giving us milk. But we loved this cow so much, you could literally go up to it, you could cuddle this cow's head, smush right into it, and it was like having a dog. It was so cute. Plus, if you got, if you got, if you called Dairy Maid down, and Dairy Maid wasn't exactly a fast cow, and I'd plod our way down to the gate, and you'd get be at a gate hanging over going, Dairy Maid, and all this. And he would plod on down, he'd come down, you could get on the gate put your leg over and you could sit on dairy mode. No word of a lie, we used to ride the cow. You couldn't kick her on to do a trot, but you know, you could walk along, <laughs> it's so cool. Your legs are like this mind, because obviously a cow is wide. Oh, it used to be so much fun, it used to be so much fun. So I have quite a soft spot for cows, I have to say, it's quite a soft spot. Okay, let me see where you're all going. We are all good now, perfect, perfect, okay. On the side of this, um, the left hand side of your face, I just want you to add a little bit of that dark blue just on the very outside, just to give it a bit of sort of like depth at the end, yeah? And now this is where we're gonna turn this crazy Mohican into more of a curly, you know, the curly top on the top of a cow's head. So use your blue and just add some swirly whirlies. And, you know, any shape's fine. I'm literally just going blah, 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 blah. curly in, curly off, curly in, curly off. You know, you don't want it to be too perfect at the end of the day. It's hair. Okay, so I've got that kind of curly, whirly hair mass on the top. Beautiful. Now, if you really want your cow to have blue eyes, use your blue now to put in your eyes. I'm going to do mine black, but if you want to have blue, please put your blue in. Beautiful. Okay, let's get on to the nose. Now, I need you to, do you know how to make like a pinky flesh color? To make a pinky flesh color, you have white and red, and start with white, dip your brush in red, tiniest bit, mix it to get that first colour pink. Let me put this up, that's the colour I'm using. I guess it's flesh colour, it's an oil pastel. Then add a tiny dot of yellow and that's when you get that kind of flesh tone that we all talk about. Look, 
What's flesh tone? You know, we're all different colours. Brown, green, no, we don't, no one's green. Um, I feel green sometimes after a few too many gins, but uh, no, no one's green. But you know what I mean? We've all got different tones of skin. I'm classically English with lots of freckles. Um, but my twin sister, who lives in Abu Dhabi, has like olive skin. I mean, we all have different skin. But they, they call this flesh colour, and of course everyone's flesh is different, but you know what I mean. That kind of pinky pink colour, all right? So for me, what I want to try and do is create an area here which is lighter. So I'm because I'm going to use watercolours in a minute, I'm just going to use my pastel on this side. So I'm going round the nostril. So if you've got to mix this up with acrylics first, white, add a tiny bit of red, and then add your yellow, a tiniest bit of yellow, and you'll end up getting the flesh tone. It's more peachy. The reason why, if you don't, you'll just end up with baby pink, which is pretty ugly. Oh, so I've just smudged that. That's all right. All right, so you can see I haven't painted, I haven't um, put pastel here in this middle bit because I want to have this as a highlight area. Okay, now I'm going to do the inside of the mouth as well. And the bottom of the lip. And when you've got this colour mixed up, you can have a little bit of play. A lot of the areas that we've left now are actually going to be the white of the cow, except for the ears. So you can add little flashes of this pink, not because it's a colour, but more to kind of balance the picture. So I'm just adding tiny flashes of this um, sort of pastel -y pink flesh tone just in the areas that are going to remain white later, just to soften it off, okay? Just to soften it off. That's too bright, okay. So I've, just to show you with my finger, I've done it here. I've done it on the top of the back. I've done it down the bottom. If I move my cow back, you can see how high up it is. So there's the end of my picture. And it's just up in that blue area and then just there down the side, all right? It's quite hard to see because it's, you know, it's a very pale color. But I'm gonna pull her forward so you can see the nose because the face is the most important part. And then I'm gonna add a bit of that pink in the bottom of the ear on both sides. And I'm gonna use that pink for the horn. And we're gonna add a darker pink but there, I've just laid it on, and that's the kind of pale pink bit done. Everybody's all good. That's what I like. So often in pastels, you have like this color pink, which is like what I would call um, baby pink, and that's your flesh tone. And you might have a hot pink, which has got much more blue in it, so it's more of a cerise. If your pastels get dirty, by the way, you literally just flip up your paper, roll it round like that, and it will rub all that yucky colour off. Okay, so using my hot pink, I'm going to go around the outside of my horns. And leave the inside with the pale pink. I'm going to do the top of my ears, not to the end, but just the top part. And a couple of bits at the bottom of the ear. That, that top, that far corner is going to be purple in a minute. Underneath the rest of this ear, so I had a little bit of pale pink, that flesh tone. And now I'm doing the rest of the bottom of the ear in the hot pink. And like I said at the very beginning, it doesn't matter if your placement of colour is slightly different area. That's fine. This is all about us kind of like finding our way, enjoying it. It's all good. So I've got a tiny bit of flesh colour on the back and then red round the nose. And I'm just going to join those two colours up a little bit with a bit of hot pink just there. It 
tiny bit of hot pink between my two greens, just a tiny bit, not very much at all. A tiny bit round the blue and into my flesh tone, not very much. This is about balancing it. When I do paintings, I say, and certainly on my painted pet classes, where everybody's painting they're a different animal, but they're following the same principle, you have to put, when you lay one color on one side, you need to lay it on the other. So if you can see, we've got cool color here, cool color here, warm color here, warm color here. You need to balance it, otherwise you do get crazy with your eyes. It becomes crazy. Okay, I want you to go round your nostril area with the hot pink. If you're using acrylics, you might want to blend this a little bit into your pale pink, which is fine. And a little bit in the tongue area. So I'm just putting a little bit of the pink between the flesh tone and the red tone. And that is my pink done. That is pinky pink, all finished. So I'm going to ask a question to the parents. Silly question. But who cannot wait for Monday? Hallelujah! School's back! School's back! Oh my goodness! I mean, actually, I have to say my kids have been fabulosio. I've loved actually having them around. It's been great. But I've not enjoyed being a teacher, especially a teacher of math or science or anything on the left side of my brain that just does not function. It's been tricky, people. Um, Harry, my youngest, had a math is, uh, assessment on Friday. Did he have it on Friday? Well, I think actually he could have done it all week. But of course, because he's like me, he puts off the thing he hates to the very end. Um, yeah, I wasn't much help with that, let's be honest. And I know it's year six primary math, but I just, I'm not interested, people. I'm just not interested in it. I don't want to do it. So, uh, yeah, Dad had to step in with that. Actually, Harry's pretty good at math. He, he did most of it on his own, but I don't want to be a teacher. I, I don't mind teaching art. You can put me in a, te in a classroom and I'll teach art till the cows come home. Excuse the phrase. <laughs> All right, now I've got purple, and I'm putting purple on the end of my ear. And I want you to go round the bottom of the ear, and this is going to be kind of, it's a bit like using the black liner. Okay, so round the back of the ear. And we're just sort of making that nice, strong ear shape. And I'm going to use my purple to draw down the back. So I went over my line to draw down the back. If you don't want to and you want to use black, you can. But I'm going to go around my lines using purple. I don't want to go down the black route. I want to use purple. Please feel free to use black if you want to. But I'm going round my cow lines, round the face in my dark purple, okay? Same with down the face here. And you can make this a bit shaky if you want because the bit down the center of the face is kind of fur, isn't it? It's cowhide. So it doesn't have to be a perfect line. And then again, I'm gonna go around the nose. If you wanna use black, please use black. I'm gonna use purple. That does not mean to say that is the color you should use. It's just my preference. I'm not a huge fan of black. Um, I find black's really, it's, it's, no, that's not true. I love black, but in paintings, I would rather add black on top of purple than I would start off with black. So that's kind of where I, that's kind of my, and everyone has different feelings on that, and that's fine. Every artist has a different approach, but I always start with purple first, and then I might add black afterwards. But, you know, once you add black, it's really hard to take it back if you don't want it as dark. So I'm now doing the pupils and I'm literally, I'm not pressing my full press with the purple for the pupils because I am gonna add some black to that. Same with my nostrils. I'm not gonna press super hard with my um, pastel. I'm just gonna do a soft purple color. If you're using paint, have the same approach. Just put a light bit of purple because then you can add black in as well, okay? I know it's slightly different that like I'm teaching in pastel but what you're working out is you can do it. You don't have to have exactly what I have to have. And that's what's special about art. Okay, that's what's fabulous. 
Okay, so I'm going to do the mouth here. I'm going around my pencil line with my purple pastel. Going to put a purple line in there as if that's the leg. We don't have to do much more than that, that's okay. And a bit of purple just under the chin there because this, is, this would be in shadow. So just a little bit of purple under there. Oh, he's cute, isn't he? Our cow's lovely. He's saying moo. Okie dokie. Now, now I'm going to add my black. So get your black pastel or get your black paint. Once you've put in your purple, because what you'll decide is how much black to add. So with my nostril, I'm going to go at the sharp edge there and round the curve. I'm going to add black. I'm going to pull this forward so you can see it much closer. Okay, so the top of it and round the curve, adding the black, but leaving that bit there in the purple, and that will help to give it some more dimension. Okay, so sh I'll show you again. Top of his nostril, round on the right hand side with the black and where the curve is, and then leave the rest as purple, and you get a sense of depth inside his nose. All right. I want to add a little bit of black underneath the mouth. Why? Well, because that's obviously in shade. So I am colouring over the red. That's fine. Okay, that's fine. I want to do exactly the same under the chin. Just adding a tiny bit of black just underneath where the shadow of the chin is. Again, I'm colouring over the top of my colours, which is fine. Beautiful. I'm going to do the same with the ears. So I'm going to add some black where the ear joins the head. Where the ear joins the head. And I'm going to move it over. Ooh, move it back a bit so you can see the other ear. I'm going to do exactly the same there. Where the ear joins the head. And if you want to, this is your choice you can do a line to mark the inside of the ear. I mean, the colour does do that, but if you want to add a black line, you can. And if you decide that you want the, your ears to be dark around the outside, you can outline them as well. Again, choices, your choices, okay? I'm guiding you, but it's a bit like um, going to a personal trainer and you want to learn how to do a burpee or a press up, I can tell you how to do it, but you just need to have a go yourself. And art is the same. And that's why there's no wrong way of doing it. So I will guide you and tell you the step, and then you have a go. If you make a slightly different shape, brill, means you've made your own shape and you've made your own and created your own, all right? Don't be too put out by that. Okay, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of um, black over the top of the nose here, like that. And then in between my colours, I'm just going to add some literally some black lines. Now, this is optional. If you don't want to do this, don't do this. This is just breaking up the patchworkiness of the colour. If you don't want to do this, don't do this. If you want to keep it with just colours, that's fine. Okay, just adds a little bit of strength where those shapes changes of color happen, all right? Again, your choice. Okay, now to the eyes. I am gonna pull her forward. Come on, Isla, here we go. All right, I'm gonna do exactly the same as I did with the nostrils. On the right-hand side of the eyeball, I'm going dark with the black. The right-hand side of both eyeballs, dark with the black, and then leaving the purple and a little bit of white to sort of create the roundness of that eyeball. Like I said, if you want to put eyelashes, why not? One, two, three, and one, two, three. If you don't want to, you don't have to. That's entirely up to you. And then finally, before I get my watercolours out, I'm going to put a tiny bit of black just on the top of the hair. And that's really so that when I do my background, um, when I do my background, there's just... A sort of edge where it finished. So I'm adding in some black curl shapes. 
I might go over the top of those ear uh, ears, horn areas. Gorgeous. Now, I have, if you're using oil pastels, hopefully you've got a white. I have a white. So uh, in my white area, I am going to put in, so all the bits that are white, I'm going to add some white pastel. And I'm not going to put it all over, so I'm not going to try and get a really, really, really full colouring. I'm just going to scratch over, so there'll be quite a bit of the paper that still shows through. You cannot see this. I know that. I appreciate that. But that's because in a minute we're going to use um, watercolour. And some of this white pastel will then stay nice and white. So in my bit here, in the nose, I'm just going to add some white right through the middle. And the same with the fluffy bit down the head, down the middle. I suggest if you're painting with, with acrylic, I would mix up a very, very light grey colour. Um, and some white and paint this with if 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 white is a one then you want to just add a two or a three just a tiny knock off being white that way some of your paper will show through as your one color as your whitest white or you paint with the three paint all of this area in like paint the whole thing with a very very pale gray and then you can paint white on top to give it another brightness you either do it in reverse or the other way, okay? So you can't see that, but I've just added some white pastel in these X sections that are left. I've just scribbled with my white pastel like that. Have we got any questions? No, oh my goodness, you're all doing so well. Does anybody wanna give me a question? Please let me know. Well done. Now, if you want to do anything in your background, I know the picture that I put up had a butterfly. If you want to add a butterfly, you can. It's literally just a body, a head, a body, and then a wing up that way into the middle, and then a wing like that, and you'll just do a second wing. And you can make that color butterfly whatever you want. It's, you know, if you don't want to do, put a butterfly, don't put a butterfly. Again, your decisions, your painting, choose whatever you'd like to do, okay? If you want to do that, then you can. You can add a little bit of colour with your butterfly. And then once I've done this, I'm going to be painting my background. I'm going to paint my background and then we're going to finally go over the white bits of our cow and put a colour layer over the top. And then your picture pretty much is done, people. You've done so good. So there's my butterfly, super quick. Now I want to add in um, some splashes of colour on my background. So I'm just going to scribble, and I literally mean scribbly colours in the background. Almost like it's confetti. If you're painting, you might want to paint um, like a pale, pale colour, like a pale grey or something, and then get your brush and go like this. Flick, 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 and get that kind of funky, bright, happy party feel. You can see I'm literally just scribbling some little shapes. I'm not really thinking about it. I'm just going blob, 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 blob. All right. That's it. So before I do my background, I'm going to paint my cow in. I want a very, very pale blue colour. So there's two options. You either use lots of water or you use a tone of blue, okay? So I'm using quite a bit of water and I'm going to paint all over my white and you'll see that I'll end up with this pale wash of blue just where the white is. Some of the white will be resisted because it's wax. And I'm just knocking it down, and it's literally just a very pale, washy colour blue. You can hardly see it, but it's just enough that it hits the um, paper, and it just colours in the cracks. Let's do the face as well. Like that. 
I'm just going to bring him forward so you can have a really good look. And then the same with the, um, the cow's nose. I'm using a pale pink. I'm just going to go over it. Some of that white that's in the middle will resist because that's why we painted it there. And I'm just going to paint all over the cow's nose. Pull it back a bit. Whee, awesome. And all over the rest of the body, I want to paint in bright yellow. So that's why I left some of my paper showing so that I could literally paint using the watercolor and the rest of the body will have this bright undertone of yellow. So I'm filling up any gaps that I had where there's no pastel We'll have just watercolour yellow today. If you have been painting acrylic and you haven't got any gaps, then you obviously don't need to do this step at all. And if you've done oil pastel but you like the way it looks and you don't want to put watercolour on, that's absolutely fine as well. You're getting the hang of how Karen teaches, aren't you? I want to guide you so that you get unlock this fantastic side that you never knew you even had. And making your own creative decisions is part of that process. It's part of saying, oh my goodness, actually I like the way it looks right now. Karen, Bess, stop. I don't want to do that step. Perfect, don't do it. Oh, we just got some drip drippage happening there. That's okay. Okay, now my background. You can do whatever color you want for your background. And I am going to go with a tealy colour. So this is kind of like the aqua green. I'm going to use the largest brush I've got. And when you're painting with watercolours, the beautiful thing is you don't want it to be flat. And I would say the same with acrylics. If you're using an acrylics to do your background, then try to make some areas a bit darker than other areas. And to do that, you just need to add a little bit of water. So can you see straight away there, that bit there is darker than up here. And that's because look, I put my brush back in the watercolor and I've not got very much water. But if I then drip, put my brush into the water and come down here, I've got a really light tone. I've still got color coming out of my brush, but it's much lighter because it's been diluted with the water. All right? So that's how you play with shades and tones when you're using watercolors. You're probably doing it horizontally. I'm doing it vertically, which means I'm having a load of drips. But I love a good drip. Oh, I love it. In fact, I do do one painting where the top of the painting, we put drips on it intentionally. And we, once we finish the painting, we put drips all over it. I love it. I love that. Okay, just down the back of uh, the head, back of the body. And there we have it. There is Isla the cow. Isla is finished. If I put it there, you can see it in both screens then. Look at that. How clever is that? So there is Isla the cow. Hopefully you guys have, um, you're on the final stages. You'll be able to personalize it with whatever colors you've got. As you know, I'm doing this for free because I love you. Um, the only thing I ask you to do in return for having my gorgeous self all to yourself and creating these wonderful art is to send me a message, send me a picture of what you've done. Please, if you haven't done already, pop on at You Create Art at Home and leave me a review. I would love to get some proper reviews. It really helps with, um, you know, the algorithms with Facebook, saying it out loud, probably shouldn't say it, but, you know, let's, let's be honest. Um, you know, and as we move into new times, clearly I'm gonna go back into having a functioning business. So please, if you've had a great time, Thank you for joining me again on our Saturday night paint and picnic. I've had a lovely time. I can't wait to come back later to do our Scottish Highland Co. And that one will be landscape. Yeah, we're going to start at seven o'clock. 
we'll get people to arrive, leave, you know, we won't kick off until about, you know, 10 past seven, something like that, all right? Um, so I'm going to say goodbye, going to go and have some tea, and I will see you later. Take care. Bye.